ghouls, ghoulettes, and guesties. Welcome to Gonst FM Off Air, the official podcast companion for 66.6 Gonst FM, the radio station dedicated to the band Ghost and the Gonst posting community. We've got a very special episode for you today. Today, I got to talk to Papa Cognatus, 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 I still can't say his name correctly because I'm fucking stupid, from the rock band Emeritus, based out of Los Angeles, California, a tribute to the band Ghost. We got to chat about their first show, which, believe it or not, was back in November of 2023. This was a very fun chat. Uh, Papa showed up in full regalia, and uh, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let him do the talking. Hope you enjoy. I won't. I won't hold you too too long because I know I know you're rather uh, you're a rather busy papa these days. So. <laughs> the ghouls they keep me on my toes. Oh, I, I figure they do. I mean, it, it's got to be a circus almost uh, reining them in for shows and you know other ministry happenings and such. So, yeah, yeah, they like to have they like to have fun. They like to um, you know party a little bit too hard sometimes. I got to keep them under control. So. I can imagine it's really hard being a ringleader in that in that sense. I, I'm, I'm a one man show over here, thankfully, so I don't have to worry about that. So I commend you for, for being able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. All right, everybody. So I'm I'm sitting here with Papa Cognitus from the rock band Emeritus based in Los Angeles, California. How are you doing today, bud? Doing excellent, Richie. Uh, just a note for everybody out there. Uh, the pronunciation is in Latin. It's actually cognatus, like a oh. cognac. I don't oh, talk right. about it much. Usually people just call me Papa C because they don't want to deal with the, you know, they get afraid. They see all these letters. And if, if you Google it, actually, it's uh, there's some like bug that also has the name Cognatus. It's really, the, actually, don't Google it. It's kind of weird. It's, <laughs> it's scary pictures. Never mind. Forget that I said that. It's okay. I'm just going to blame it on the fact that I'm from Louisiana and I don't <laughs> know how to talk sometimes. So Louisiana. Yeah. My goodness. It's the it's the different LA. You're in you're in like the actual LA when people say, "Hey, uh, you from LA?" And I'm like, "I'm I'm from Louisiana, not Los Angeles." You know, <laughs> so they get that mixed up sometimes too. So postcodes, postcodes. <laughs> so how did um how did the band form? Because I know you guys uh, just had your first gig uh, back in November of 2023 at the uh, I believe it was the Brick Rocks Bar in uh, Maywood. Yes, that's right. Bricks Rock Bar uh, down in Maywood. They were kind enough to extend us an offer uh, with uh, no real track record. They saw like one video of us online and they were, you know, kind of our, our demo tape that we were putting out. And they were like, hey, I know Ghost. Let's uh, let's have these guys in. Yeah, we uh, we started having conversations actually just in August of uh, last year, August 2023. Um Facebook conversations, uh, reached out to a couple people in my network on Instagram. Uh, I, I've been a cosplayer since uh, 2018. Um, kind of uh, switched to vocal cosplay. Uh, it, that was my uh, Instagram bio for a bit. Uh, wanted, wanted to take it a step further and uh, just happened to find some fantastic musicians locally who were really into Ghost. Um, and yeah, it uh, it all just kind of fell together really quickly. Uh, it was I think less than ninety days from our uh, first conversations to our first show. So, <laughs> oh wow, that's a that's really? a, actually a very quick turnaround as far as bands go. Yeah, I'm a musician oh, yeah. too, and I, I've been in plenty of bands where sometimes it took six months, eight months, you know, because you know, depending on what you're doing, you know, if you're writing original or doing covers, uh, I sadly, I, I. I I'm a perfectionist in some regards with, with that. So I don't want to play until I know I've got my stuff like the back of my hand. So uh, this sure. is a massive undertaking uh, doing um, a tribute to such a, a massive band. And I think you guys do it really well. I've seen a couple of your videos from the uh, Rocks Bar and also at the Phantasm 69 event that you guys just did. And I... I want to come out to California just to see you guys. I want to come out and, you know, <laughs> see the Phantasm stuff, but I would love to come catch you guys at a concert sometime. Um, how Thank you so did much. the Oh yeah, you're welcome, man. Um, how <laughs> did the how did the first uh performance actually compare uh to the Phantasm 69 event? Did you guys have maybe see a difference in the maybe the crowd type or you know, cuz I know the Phantasm 69 event was actually like very much um a ghost heavy themed show so i know sometimes the crowds can differ depending on you know location and size 
Yeah, so, you know, the November show at Bricks uh, was kind of uh, testing the waters very much for us. We had no idea what to expect. Um, several of us, you may not uh, expect to hear this, but uh, had never been on stage. It, it had actually been 12 or 13 years for myself uh, since I had been wow. performing as a musician on stage. Wow. Um, we had uh, yeah, a couple of people as their very first time. And there's a lot of nerves happening, a lot of, a lot of shit going on. Um, but... Um, yeah, I would say the crowd there uh, was very, very thrilled, very excited to be there. Um, you know, people were showing up early. People were uh, dressing up. We had people in costume, ghost cosplay, you know, is, a, is just a huge thing among the fandom. Um, and we were just thrilled to see. We had Sisters of Sin there uh, from from the Phantasm Ghoul's Ball community. Lots of supporters. Uh, basically, you know, I would say half the crowd at least was like from that that circle of uh, friends that we've kind of made over the past year or so um, with those events. So yeah, it, uh, the vibe was, uh, was definitely, I don't know. It was, it was, uh, it, it was perfect for our first gig. We had, we had a fantastic time um, compared to Phantasm. I, I don't know if this really made the, the news in the, in the community, but uh, the first, uh, the first steps we took on stage, uh, the microphone actually failed. And, you know, we got Conclavi Condio and I'm just standing there at a dead mic, shouting into nothingness. And the crowd is like, what the fuck? You know, it was, it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny, but also kind of, you know, really frustrating. And uh, we've uh, we figured out whose fault it was. And uh, I'm not going to say here, but uh, the ghouls, the ghouls are not happy about it. We'll, we'll say that. Oh, so. oh no. Did I, yeah, I, you know. I, uh, they, they might put a hit out on him. You never know. That's, that's hey, a serious you know, business. <laughs> you know, as as a papa, you gotta you gotta always be watching your back a little bit too. You know, you don't you, you can't trust everybody. No, not at all. No. Or anybody. And, and that's Any? very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very frustrating, man. Like I, I've been on stage before, and um, I've I've had a snare head bust on me on stage before, oh. and it was the one time that I didn't have a backup snare. And thankfully, oh, yeah, thankfully the band that we were playing with, their drummer, like, and I had hit it off before we started the show, and he he ran like he uh, he he ran like full sprint, you know, mid song yeah. swapped it because he he could hear it. He was like, oh no, <laughs> so he ran and swapped it out. But wow. yeah, microphone is a whole different story because like snare drum, you know, drums are just projecting. You have to stand there, and hopefully, you know, I would think, you know, at that point, you know, the people in the crowd would probably sing it for you you know if, if that happens <laughs> yeah well. yeah that's that's one of the nice things about uh about ghost all the fans know all the words so like you know the words were happening you know you could hear kind of where we were in the song but uh yeah it was, it was a little frustrating you know you come out there and you're wearing a big pope robe and everything and it's just nothing you know yeah. um vita vita devoid uh one of the organizers of uh phantasm and ghoul's ball she actually she i don't know if it was her or somebody else i don't even remember because of all the chaos somebody ran up and like handed me her mc microphone with all the uh the sparkly stuff on it it was uh it was a lot fancier of a microphone than i was expecting to use but she kind of saved the day with that um so i was like on the pa mic for, <laughs> for the, uh, most of the show there it was a little little uh, if you if you were standing too far back from the stage, the sound was a little imbalanced. But you know, overall, it was a fantastic learning lesson uh, for all of us. Uh, we uh, we are very much going to have only better shows from now on. So, <laughs> yes. Vita Vita's lovely for that. Uh, she she's, she's pretty fantastic. great actually. Uh, I, I like Vita very much, and, uh, and the, the microphone is. Uh aesthetically fitting in some regard too. So I, I can imagine that was like, a, if you're going to have a replacement mic, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally so, agree. So you mentioned uh, you guys got started probably 90 days before your first gig. Uh, what was the, um, I mean, obviously the band itself ghost, I, but what was uh, at the point that you decided, Hey, like this would be a lot of fun to do as far as like uh, forming a tribute band, because um, yeah. I've had this discussion with several people before where, uh, there's been a ton of bands over the years, like, you know, Kiss, Motley Crue, you know, bands like that. They have, you know, tribute bands and a lot of them, and they're all very good, you know, in regard uh, to uh, making a spectacle of it, you know, and Ghost is just prime for being able to do something like this. Um, what was really the uh, the point of no return for you, I guess, when it, when it came to like, no, we're going to do this? Yeah, so that's, that's kind of a... 
Oh, I don't know how much time we have. I have, I have, I could go into so many layers of detail here, but um, for me, I think my my entry into the ghost fandom was uh, kind of multi-stage uh, back in, I think it was the Infestisomum era that I first started listening to the band. I heard um, Year Zero was kind of on my radar. I couldn't really get into much of the other stuff though, which is, uh, it's just funny to, to think about that so looking back now now that i'm like a, you know i only listen to ghost when i'm in the car usually it's uh you know 99 percent of what i listen to these days but anyway um so there was that they kind of got on my radar and then meliora came out I, I wasn't even aware like when that album came out but cerise once i heard cerise for the first time it just kind of stole my soul I don't know if I've actually mentioned this on air before, but it's something I've always thought. Cerise kind of reminds me of if uh, Ghost wrote Sad But True by Metallica. There's almost the same Ooh. kind of like, you know, stomping and the guitar riff and everything. And it's a powerful song. Yeah, that, that thud, thud, thud in the background, right? Very much so. I see that. Yeah, so uh, so Meliora era, I was kind of a passive fan. In the lawsuits, right, 2017, I was, I was kind of um, really... I don't know. It it kind of it kind of pulled me in, and and uh, I was fascinated. Uh, you know, the seven years before that, I was wasn't following the whole time, but uh, but the the anonymity aspect of it, I I was always intrigued by it. I was like, who are these guys? What's going on? But I was such a passive fan, I never bothered to research enough. I probably would have found out it was Tobias uh, at that uh, at that point. But anyway, uh, so I just you know kept creeping in a little bit closer. The Cardinal era starting April 2018, uh, Rats comes out. And then I think it was like the week after Rats. I, I was listening to Rats was the only song I was listening to for about a week. Um, could not put it down. Um, a lot of change happening in my life around that time, too. And then my friend at work is like, hey, I got an extra ticket for the Milwaukee show. Uh, the night before Prequel was scheduled to come out. It was May 31st, 2018. Um, and I'm like, no experience with cosplay at that time, but I was like, I wanna, I wanna look like Papa, you know? I wanna do it. Yeah. I put on some face paint. I tried getting a contact lens in, I couldn't do it. Could not figure it out. Um, but I go to that show that night, and I don't know if you remember this, if you were a fan around that time. But um, this was the show that they actually had to cut short because a fan collapsed at the end of the first act, um, and actually, unfortunately, passed away. Oh, um, I, I do remember hearing about that actually because they yeah. did an entire um i want to say they did like a t-shirt of it as they well did. and that that all the proceeds had gone to his family the fans family exactly exactly yes so so that was kind of like a big shock for for being my first ritual that i attended i was like holy fuck this is this is wild uh just something that i happened to be there for right um and then like you know driving home the next day with my friend, like we were listening to Prequel for the first time in the car. And uh, <laughs> the very first track, I'll never forget this. It's one of the creepiest things I've, I've noticed about this band. Uh, the, the name of the auditorium in Milwaukee, where they played the show, the Riverside Auditorium. Dude fucking dies there at the show. The track Ashes, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. As the phrase, ashes on the riverside. Yeah. So hearing hearing that the morning after this fucking, you know, mind fuck of an event, um, it was like, what do you, you know, there's just like some ominous feel like, holy fuck. Did you, did you hear what I just heard? This guy just said, you know, the, the kids singing on that track, ashes on the riverside. And so that, so that really kind of took my spirit in and I was like, holy fuck. There's something, there's something about this band. I have to, I have to. I have to follow, I have to, to get in there and understand. Uh, that was kind of when I first started reading around on the subreddit, uh, Ghost BC subreddit, learning more about the band, learning more about the lore. I was getting into the lore. Um, and I had some Craigslist conversations with uh, people in Chicago. I actually lived in Chicago at the time. Um, and um, I was going to play keyboards for a Chicago based tribute. Um, you know, like like I said, this this all this series of events just kind of sucked my soul in, and um, I had I had plans to go meet up with this tribute band. Other shit happened in my life, and I, I couldn't make it. But uh, 
turns out, I've now found out that, uh, that that tribute band is still in existence today. It's Absolution um, in Chicago. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're, uh, they're still playing. Uh, I've heard so of the name, actually. So Yeah, I was almost, almost part of that whole situation. Uh, but ended up moving out of state not long after, and then uh, you know COVID hit and kind of just put the idea on the shelf for a while. Um, my life got really busy, uh, you know, and chaotic for a few years. Had an opening um, in my my schedule last year, and I was like, you know, if I don't do this now, it's never going to happen. Right. Um, and just just kind of took advantage of that opportunity, and and the fact that I didn't, you know, I had it in the back of my mind like I'm never going to be on the stage again never going to be doing this again and um lo and behold uh happened to hit i think at just the right time in the ghost community and and uh, the fact that there were no um la tributes at the time was kind of mind-blowing right right that's that's more? shocking <laughs> like you would so, think <laughs> yeah but uh you know in uh, two nights at the la forum you would you know where's where's the musician that right so i I went out and uh, we're making it happen. We uh, close to a thousand followers on Instagram right now, which is really just insane. <laughs> Can't believe it. Um, after just two shows, we played two shows. Um, yeah, the fans are very yeah. supportive. You know, like yeah. that's that's one thing I've learned about becoming part of this community as well is that uh, the the fan base we like, we are all so supportive of one another and so supportive of art you know as it were like you know music or uh physical art um anything to do with it and it's it's awesome and i'm glad to hear that you guys are over a thousand oh, followers right or that you're over a thousand followers on instagram i was uh just actually I was scrolling instagram earlier and uh i believe your keyboard player emeritus keys is, is that yes yes yeah, i love her perfect. videos i love her videos so much yeah, she honestly, she is she's kind of the lifeblood of the band. I have to say, it's really uh, we've we're so fortunate to have found her, um, and the the saxophone skills. I don't know if you've seen the Miasma video, but just holy shit, absolutely. Um, yeah, just blowing us away every every time. Um, so yeah, very thankful for for her and and for for all the ghouls. All the it's ghouls great. Well. It's great to have a multi ghoul, and it's great to have multiple yeah. ghouls. You know that that are so talented yes. too, because that's another thing I I have noticed about you guys is like all your instrumentalists, all your ghouls are uh, extremely well versed in their instruments, and you guys do a great job. Every time I've ever yeah. seen a video of you guys, I, you. I just I, yeah, you're welcome. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, we What's... we uh... sorry. Go ahead. Oh, and I was I was just gonna um ask like as far as like all that goes, like uh what y'all's favorite song to play live has been so far. Ooh, oh my god. Oh, that's such a tough one. I mean Cerise was really fun uh the last show. Uh just that you know, because it's been my favorite song for so long and, and people were people were kind of upset, like, Oh, why aren't we playing this for the first show? And that's I've kind of you know, I, I wanted us to kind of work our way up, uh, you know. With, with the more the more the more serious songs that the fans will be more upset if we screw it up, you know, leave those for later. We've yeah. got more we've got more coming down the pipeline. But um, yes, I would say Cerise is my personal favorite so far. Um, everybody really loved me as well last time. It gave an opportunity to showcase kind of all the instruments. Um, we did uh, a rendition of Stay uh, that was kind of fun last time. It was it was very. Um, Kind of different from uh, the recording, uh, the, like the official version uh, from Ghost. So that was uh, that was fun. We had Aria, our uh, background vocalist, uh, kind of leading that one. Uh, we did kind of a duet thing. That was fun. So yeah, those those are the three that uh, come to mind. But you know, it's the whole catalog. We our goal is to play the whole catalog eventually. We really want to, you know, cover all of it. And the thing about it is, is there's such a vast catalog that you could play a completely different ritual every show, you know, yeah. at that point. Like when you when you become familiar with every song, you could you could play a different ritual every show. You could do an entire album at one show. You could just do, you know, the hits from the albums. You could do deep cuts, like everything. Of course, you know, us being Ghost fans, I'm pretty sure you agree. And it's like, no, there is no deep cut. They're all they're all like <laughs> up there for us. You know, at, at least that's how I see it. I, I love all their music equally. So yeah yeah it's all fantastic I, I i really like you know just just the depth of it like you're saying like there's there's so many options of which which direction we could go with each show and uh the show that we've got coming up actually knucklehead on uh may or sorry april 21st 
Uh, we're going to be playing for 90 minutes. We've got a couple new songs on that uh, set list already that we're really excited to put out there. And uh, it'll be just us playing that night, I believe. Uh, so come out and see us if you're in the area, Hollywood, California. Yeah, same venue that uh, a lot of the uh, Ghouls Ball events have been held at. Um, I think it's starting in March 2023. That was kind of, uh, you know, I really got to give a shout out to the, the organizers of Ghouls Ball and Phantasm, that whole crew. Um, they have been instrumental in the success um, that, that we've seen so far with, with Emeritus. Um, the, the meeting up with fans, I think they've, they have like, I want to say they've had like six or seven events over the last year. And I've, I've tried to make it out to all of them. And it's really just great just being in the presence of other Ghost fans and having kind of a local community, a local network of people who are just as jazzed about the band as I am, you know? <laughs> so Yeah, and that's, a lot of fun. The, that's the best part about it all is is meeting um, everybody in this community. Like, I, I'm, I'm glad to know you now, uh, which uh, anybody out there watching or listening, uh, Papa is uh, now in uh, – our Gaunt's posting Facebook group, which has been a ton of fun to see you, you know, pop in and out of there every once in a while. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, I get great joy oh, in man. seeing anybody in the community, like coming in and out of our, our little corner of the internet. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Um, if anybody wants to follow uh, the band, you or Emeritus Keys, like where, where can anybody go to follow you guys? Where, where is your main um, social media that, that you use? Yeah, so main social media, our Instagram, um, Emeritus Tribute, uh, is the, the username there. I'm Papa Konyatus, probably hard to spell, uh, P-A-P-A-C-O-G-N-A-T-U-S. Uh, and then Emeritus Keys, obviously Emeritus Keys, K-E-Y-S. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are our main uh, social media accounts currently. Um, we're trying to launch a TikTok. I don't know if it'll be up uh, by the time this uh, episode airs, but uh, I don't know. TikTok might be banned by the time this episode airs too. So there's that whole thing. Yeah, Is I was it worth just thinking time? that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho hopefully okay. not. I'd like to see you guys expand, you know, a lot more. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on uh, social media, like pop up with more uh, ritual dates. Uh, man, if you guys need anything, you know, I'm, I'm going to spread the word like wildfire for you guys. I, I highly enjoy you, and uh, you've been a pleasure to speak with today. Absolutely. Well, yeah, thank you so much for having me, Richie. It's been, uh, it's been fantastic. Awesome, man. Well, anybody out there watching or listening, again, go follow the band Emeritus on Instagram. Follow Papa on Instagram. Follow Emeritus Keys on Instagram. And uh, hope to have you back on sometime, man. I, I would love to chat some more uh, in depth uh, in the future sometime. Yeah, absolutely, man. Sounds great. Thanks again. Thanks a bunch. Keep those goals in line for me, man. You got it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Papa. All right. Take care, Richie.